Happy is good day. 732. I tell you what, especially I've noticed it lately. If you drive around the Delaware Valley, you see plenty of for sale signs and for rent signs. Mm -hmm. now, if you put this in perspective, the tax credit deadline is passed Gone. and property taxes we know are on the way up, especially Boom. in Philadelphia. So what should you do? Should you rent or should you buy? Are you asking me? No, we're oh, going to ask an expert. Vince, Vince Ingui is here, mortgage Thank expert. Good, Good to see you, Vince. Thank you. Good to be back. So here it is. Here's the question. Right now, should we rent or buy a home? Did you really think you were going to get the owner of a mortgage company to say rent? <laughs> Come on, I'll be fair. <laughs> no, we'll be completely objective this okay, morning. Okay. And there are cases you can make on both sides. Now, a few things you want to consider, and mainly is how long do you think you're going to be in that particular yes. area? Okay, okay. this is the, probably the most important. If you're buying and you think, let's say, I'm going to be moving in a, in a year or a couple of years, there's a lot of upfront costs in buying that there aren't associated with renting, so it's probably not the best idea to buy in that situation. Okay. General rule of thumb that we take it at the front line is usually three to four years that you know you're gonna be in that in that area before you should even consider well, buying. Okay, say that again. If I'm gonna be in there three to four years, buy? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if it's any less than that, you can really think about rent. Generally speaking. Generally so, and then speaking. you were also saying that people should think about their expenses. I guess when it comes to the, your housing expenses, you have different types. When you talk about insurance, mm -hmm. and just other fees that you wouldn't have if you were a renter. Yeah, that's right. And you mentioned property taxes as well. So property taxes, homeowners insurance. Here's a, here's a big um, thing you need to figure out too when you're signing your leases. Mm -hmm. Who's going to cover the actual cost to maintain the property? Because certain mm -hmm. leases are structured where the landlord covers everything. Other leases are structured where the tenant has to cover everything. If you're the tenant and you're covering all the repairs, uh, you might as well buy that, that, that property. And the other thing, too, to consider is what are the annual increases in the rent? Typically, on average, it's usually like a 5% is it? annual increase in the rent. Those are almost always uh, the default template in a rental agreement. So you start out renting at $1,500 yeah. a month. Within five years, you know, you're up to eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars a month with those mm -hmm. incremental five percent increases. So, and then you also need to take a look at the tax implications from your in from an income tax point of view. Because, sure, you know, sometimes you may to rent the same house that you buy from a, pay a monthly payment standpoint, renting would be less than actually having a mortgage. But when you take into account the tax deductibility mm -hmm. of right. the mortgage and obviously the ultimate appreciation of that of that asset. Um, especially with historically low interest rates, you can still make a compelling argument. I don't know why people aren't more up in arms, and maybe they are, about this 9.9, .9, let's call it 10% property tax increase in Philadelphia. That's big. It is. Come on. Especially in a tough economy. You talk about, you know, kick us while we're all down, right? Uh, there's a few things you can do. And one would be take a look at refinancing, because if you're paying a high interest rate on your mortgage, get even, even the upper fives, get it down to the fours, and that may help offset or hedge the property tax increase. The other thing is contract your, you know, the township, the city, your local county, and try and appeal the assessed value of your property. Mm -hmm. and a quick, quick story, personal story. When me and my wife first bought our house, 80% yeah. um, of the value that we paid for it was the tax assessed value when we first bought it. We went in, we had about a five minute meeting, they dropped it by 20% mm -hmm. wow. just for showing up. Wow. So, you know, sometimes people don't think to take the extra step and call and set up the appointment to try and appeal what your and tax assessment. And negotiate sure. a little bit, sure. Vince, good, good to see you. All right. Thank Thanks you. very much.